So, the Drift League went really well. Uh, we had a really good time. It was a very, very professionally ran Pro-Am series. I was impressed, family was impressed, the crew was impressed, the wife behind the camera was impressed. Uh, everybody loved this. Shout out to Ruthina Gomer uh, for putting on just an amazing event for us to go to. Also, shout out to uh, Moto IQ for backing her and Formula Drift for backing her. And also everyone who staffed that day. Thank you guys so much because you're giving us an opportunity to really, really, really prepare ourselves for Formula Drift uh, Pro 2 class. With going through all this with the tech, with the cars, with the professionalism, with the uh, tardiness and, and uh, just the, or the time sensitivity rather. All that stuff is just really prepping us and I really appreciate you guys for opening that up. And thank you Irwin Dell for giving us a chance. Anyways, the E46 is back from the race. It's a little haggard and beat up. The front end is kind of messed up. The lip's broken. Uh, we got some fixing to do on this thing. Uh, but one of the things we were trying to get done before we got out to round one was a quick change differential for some of you who know that that was going on. Um, there's very few of you who know. Well, we contacted Eddie over at uh, G4 South Tex Racing. Uh, and I kind of spoke with him a little bit about it, and he turned out that he had a connection. He could get me a differential. They helped me out a lot. They actually partnered with me last year and this year. Uh, it'd be awesome if you guys went over their Instagram and gave them a follow. I think they're only at like 400-something followers right now. Uh, but it would just help me out, and it would help them out, and they support the grassroots. And I can't, like, stress that enough with you guys. Anyone who really supports me uh, is really supporting drifting in a sense and so it's cool when companies take chances with little guys like myself uh, and like you may be watching this video you have companies who back you so make sure you show them love uh, and make sure you check out GeForce anyways with that being said GeForce hooked it up and we got a winter's quick change differential so I've never torn one of these apart I've done a lot of studying on these and pretty much the difference between this and your conventional differential is that I don't know if I have an old differential sitting around here I don't anyways I'll explain it to you very very simply I would use a light board but clearly our proper fab works for all of you guys out there who uh, know about that proper video when we talked about the arms all that drawing stuff there shows you how long it's been since I've been here but pretty much the way that a normal differential would work on like your standard car um, would be that you have what's known as a pinion gear and a ring gear and so your pinion gear would come in it has teeth helical cut teeth into it and then that would mesh with your big ring gear that has helical cut teeth in it and then that the number of teeth on the uh, pinion and the number on the teeth on the ring would determine your gear ratio and then your pinion comes in, spins, spins your ring gear, depending on if you have a limited slip or a welded differential, it would then put power out to your output flanges or your output shafts or your axles or whatever you want to call this side of it. Well, the benefits to a quick change are, for one, it's a lot stronger, um, and two, is changing gear ratios. One of the downsides is it's kind of heavy. Um, but as most of you guys know, when you start having more power, you want a little bit more weight over the rear tires because it helps us out in getting traction. Contrary to popular belief, you need traction in drifting. And so, the way that this is more beneficial is you now have, instead of your pinion gear, you have the input here, and then there's a shaft that runs all the way to the back of the differential. Then inside of this back casing, we're going to do it tonight and show you how to do it. I've never done it, so we're going to find out exactly how we do this together. But in the back of the differential are these two gears stacked just like this. One on the bottom and one on the top. So your power comes in from your drive shaft through this shaft, through the one gear connected to the second gear. And then you have your ring, or and then you have your pinion gear. And then that's connected to your ring gear that's then putting power out to the uh, axles. And so... Pretty much what this allows you to do is that in a moment's notice, you can pull this back cover off, 
supposedly, we'll find out, you can take these gears out by hand, slide them off, get a new gear set, put it in, tighten the back cover on, and you're ready to go back out on the track, changing your gear set, or your gear ratio. Oh, changing your gear ratio, just like that. So they hooked us up with a nifty little chart here. You, for those of you who really want to see it, uh, I'm sure you can find it on their website, but pretty much it talks about depending on what ring and pinion gear you you pick from them and then putting on whichever gear set you pick from them would determine your final drive so right now the car has a 391 but this ring and pinion setup is a 412 because it's supposedly the strongest one is what I was told from my good buddy Mike Essa it's a 412 and we have a 21 tooth gear and a 25 tooth gear so if you go down the 412 section and you go down to the 21 and the 25, which would be right here, 21, 25 would put us over at a 346 or a 491. And so the way that that works also is that this gear set is not just one gear ratio. This gear set is two gear ratios. For those of you who know about gears, it's drive over driven. Um, and so when you flip those two gears, you're changing the way that it feels, such as if you took the back sprocket on your bicycle, the little guy, and you took the big one that's in the front and the small one that's in the back and you switched them, now all of a sudden it's going to be a lot harder to ride. And then you switch them back, now it's easier to ride. You're changing your gear ratio in a sense. That's obviously a tooth count um, on a chain system. But it's the same concept. You spin with the big to the small and it makes it easier for you to pedal and then if you guys have a mountain bike or a 10 speed you start changing gears or a roadie you start changing gears and you realize that as the tooth counts change eventually you can go to like a one to one where you'd have the same exact gear size and then that would be a one to one which would then make this just a regular 412 output uh, to the flanges so we're shooting to set up a what was it was it three something three four six we're shooting this up to 346. That's the 346 on this is is explained under the low side, and the 491 is explained under the high side. On this other side of the paper, it says high and low. So if you want the low gear, what you're gonna do on the back when you stack the gears, you're gonna put to get the low 346. You're gonna set it up just like the low photo. Small gear on top, big gear on the bottom. Same thing as your bicycle. Big sprocket in the front, small sprocket in the back. That's going to the pinion. This is going straight out of your drive shaft. If you want to flip the gear ratio, you set it up for the high side. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've never done this before, so it's going to be new for me. But this is supposed to be really fast. There you go. You're supposed to be able to pop this cover off, which I probably won't be able to do. Oh, there's the tabs. Some tabs on the sides. Come on. Sheesh. Well, it's really fast if you can get the cover off. And it's like really, really fast. I probably need like my little rubber mallet or something. All right, so rubber mallet, maybe this will help. So note to self, make sure that you have enough space to swing a hammer under there. Otherwise this will be nice and fun and difficult. There it goes. Oh, we got a sick rubber seal. Put this over here. Gently. And so this is where by hand you're supposedly able to spin the... Uh, or swap the gears, sorry. Not, you're not supposed to be able to spin anything. These are like really tight. I don't know if I'm supposed to be allowed to spin that by hand, but the bottom shaft spins by hand, no problem. And so, 
Back to the paper, we want the low gear, so we're going to put the small one up top. And the big one on the bottom. And just like that, it's in. And if you want to change the gear ratio, pull this gear out, put it up top, this gear in the bottom, put it on the bottom. And then your gear is changed. It's as simple as that versus having to change your entire differential. Undo the axles, undo the drive shaft, undo the mount points. Now you're taking off just the back cover, sliding in the new gears. Boom, your car's a different car, just like that. So again, we're going for low. So we're putting the small gear up top. And we're putting the larger gear at the bottom here. Boom, goes the dynamite. Then, back cover goes on. Supposedly when you do this as well, I'm not sure I haven't done it myself, so I couldn't really tell you, but supposedly when you're doing this, the uh, amount of gear oil that's back here is very minimal. Um, so you can actually change them, spill, spill the gear oil out and continue to run it, because um, it won't spill out all of it. It'll just spill out some. back on oh what's wrong way don't ever do what I just did. It's not good for your health. And you're done. A new record. Simple as that. It's ridiculous. That is a freaking. Amazing. There it goes. Now it spins the sides. Mm. Just needed the power. The torque to spin it because my little girly hands can barely spin it. <laughs> That's it, man. It's pretty simple. It's pretty, uh, it's not really self explanatory. Once you understand how things work, they, they become a lot easier. Um, so that's really cool. Vented, you can do all kinds of stuff. They have all kinds of information on their uh, on their setups. Yeah, 10 spline quick change gears. These are all of our ratios. So if we keep this, when we want to order a new set, let's say, you know, hey, the 346 or the 349 wasn't, or 346 wasn't really working. Um, I need another gear set. We want to be at a 391 again. Then we need to buy another gear set, and it's a 9. Uh, a 19 to a 20 tooth and then you're looking at a 391 at a low uh, gear and then you're looking at a 434 at a high gear uh, so that's pretty legit that's probably a better gear ratio for us um, but I did want to get a little bit more out of third on the low side and now switching down to a 4 or higher up to a 4 um, uh, whatever 491 then we'll be able to spin forth a little bit easier. We can do it with the 391, but it's not as uh, responsive as far as being able to fluctuate on the throttle. It's kind of just wide open, and that's all you get. So, I don't know. It's really cool. Steven's going to be creating a subframe for us to house this thing, which we got a 46 subframe again. Um, you guys, I don't know. We probably never released a video for the 36 differential into the 46 subframe, but that's what this car has right now. Um, now we're going to be doing this big old hunk of burning love into this freaking car uh, right now the reason for going to this because I'm sure somebody's gonna ask the reason to go in for this is because with the BMW differentials we were snapping them left and right um, and supposedly if you went with the 46 
M3 rear end and M3 axles that it would be strong enough, but at the end of the day, you'd be spending, I don't know how much than when we were doing it. I think you'll pay somewhere around 800 bucks to a thousand bucks for an M3 rear end. And then I'd also need to find axles. And then I'd also have to find trailing arms if they're not the same as the E36 M3. So at the end of the day, after it's all said and done, oh, and I gotta find an M3 subframe. So after it's all said and done, I'm gonna be spending around the same amount of money that I was paying for this here. Um, except now I can just make adapters that'll bolt onto here and kind of lock into these grooves. And then I can bolt my BMW E36 axles, M3 ones up to this. And then I have to get uh, the drive shaft altered in the rear to, to accommodate for this differential. Um, but with just a subframe modification, any subframe, because it doesn't matter if it's M3 or regular, because you're going to be cutting it up anyways. We have one of those. We got it uh, for free from our buddy Petey. Um, Steven's going to be modifying that for us. He's going to be helping us out with that. Drive shaft we're going to have to pay for and spacers we're going to have to pay for. And then uh, G-Force partnered with us on this one, so we got it for a little bit cheaper than what the average person would get it for. Um, but if you guys need one of these, you guys can contact G-Force Racing or Tex Racing, G-Force South. Uh, they also rebuild them. And they also sell you gear sets. You can go direct to Winters uh, as well, but again, it's just the idea of GeForce being the people who helped us out, GeForce being the people who are supporting us. Uh, I'd rather you guys go shop through them. I don't know if there's an extreme markup or anything. I don't think that they run like that. I think that uh, Winters sells directly to the public, so when they sell through a dealer, I believe their pricing is also pretty close. Unless you're going to some other company who's modifying them to make them stronger or whatever, but for pretty much everyone on the on the uh, lower level of driving, I don't. I think this will even handle. Uh, I think they were telling me when I had talked with Winters about it, 1,500 horsepower. We're only making five, um, so this would be plenty for us. Just like our dog box, that'll handle 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 horsepower. But Again, if you overkill it and you put the big stuff in your car, then you don't ever have to worry about it, and then you can drive it exactly how you want to. You don't have to worry about getting put out of a race, which has been my uh, issue. With this 36 differential, I've had to um, compensate in driving and not be able to drive the way I want to. And so now we have this. This is a solid spool setup as well, just so you guys know, for those of you who waited this long to find that out. Solid spool. It's not a limited slip. Um, so it should be cool. I guess the next stop is to go to uh, Stevens and start fabricating up a rear end for it. Subframe. Right on. Thank you guys for watching. I don't know. That, that was kind of. Sorry about that, guys. Bye.